That's what I'm thinking today, friends. We people are so, are so carried away with all the noise. So America loves noise. Look at what they're doing. They turn on these old radios just as hard as they can with rock and roll and boogly woogly and all that kind of stuff. They've got to have it so loud it'll blast your eardrums out nearly. All the noise. All the time of the day. And in the church we beat the tambourines. We run up and down and screamed and hollered and hooped and had a great time like that. Nothing against it. But where was God in it? What did it do? Broke us up in little pieces called the assemblies of God. The church of God. The Pentecostal United Oneness. And all these other different little denominations. God wasn't in it. It's a forerunner of God. It's a framework. When you see so-called Christianity today, people goes to churches and, and lives these dignified lives and goes out and denies healing and denies the power of God and denies a consecrated life. Calling you fanatics. Remember, that's framework. That's, Brother Woods, I believe you call it scaffold work. It's a bogus it's a frame that goes on the outside. God only stands on it to build the building. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. It's only a bogus frame that'll be torn down. Amen. We clapped hands and said, Glory to God, when you shout, you got it. The Methodists said that. The Nazarenes. They found out they didn't have it. The Pentecostal said, clap your hands and shout till you speak in tongues. You got it. But we found out we didn't have it. There's one more thing left. And God takes it to a cave and I can find it. Hallelujah. Let's get that still, small voice. That's something that puts a cream in the life. That's something that though you speak with tongues of men and angels and have not that, you're nothing. Though you can prophesy and speak with tongues and show signs and wonders and work miracles and do great signs. But if that little still small voice is in there, you're nothing, says the scripture. That's what we're listening for now. We've had the thunders. We've had the fire. We've had the rushing winds and the earthquakes. But God sent us a still small voice. That's what we need. Listen, brother, we need that still, small voice, a still, small voice that spoke. Jesus said you couldn't hear his voice in the street. You didn't hear him crying. He was our pattern. Look at him. He was compared to his spirit like a dove, gentle. It's great things are quite things. Did you know that, friends? Listen. The sun which gives life on the earth to every living thing, and botany life, plant life, tree life, whatever more, it brings forth life, the sun does, and it can draw a million gallons of water from the earth and make less noise than we can get a bucket full out of a pump. It's big things. Quite things are big things. Did you ever hear the world turning? Did you ever hear the planets as they pass through the orbits? Do you ever hear one? That's the big thing. Did you ever hear the sunrise? Oh, we think we have to have a lot of noise. Have to have a brass band to be a lot of jumping up and down or we ain't got a good meeting. We think everybody has to be on top of clapping their hands and things. We think the music has to be going in a rhythm and everybody running down the aisle. We've had that. What good's it done? Where's it at? Where's it got us today in a bunch of confusion? A bunch of denominations. Broke up. Brotherhood ruined. Certainly it has. It's been the old canker worm and palm worm and, and all kinds of bugs from back there in the beginning of Job saw, or Joel saw them. What the palm worm has left the canker worm eat, what the canker worm eat, the grasshopper eat, and so forth. Do we've eaten down to a stump? But the scripture says, I will restore, saith the Lord. We're waiting for something. 
of all the shout we've had enough blast and noise to, to convert the whole world. We've had enough hoorah and hollering and carrying on to what's it done? It hasn't built the church, it's built denominations. It's made man go out with puffed up ideas and stuffed shirts. I don't like that stuff. Walk out on the platform and say, Oh, look at him. He's a prince. Look how he's dressed, just polished and everything. He knows how to make his vows and so forth. That ain't what God chooses. A prophet thought that one day. He's going to anoint a servant. He said, He's the biggest of the family. He'll look right. But God refused him. We don't have to have princes and and so forth to stand up there like I don't know what. It ain't the clothes you wear or the eloquence you speak with. It's the something that's inside of you. That Amen. voice of God. That's what it is. The prophet passed by another and said, that's not him. God's refused him. Passed and said, haven't you got another? So we got a little ruddy one back here on the hillside herding the sheep. This is David. When they brought this little red-headed, freckle-faced guy up across there and his little stooped in shoulders and sheepskin and wrapped around him, God said, that's him. Amen. All your big statues and stuff, shirts didn't go with God. You might be DDD, PhD, or double LD. You might be Bishop Pope or whatever. You might be, but it takes God to make something out of nothing. Amen. As long as you can be the nothing, God's the something. As long as you can get yourself out of the way, then God can come in. But when you're so stuffed up and starchy, you've got the biggest and the best. You haven't got nothing that you ought to have. Amen. That's a humble heart before God. And we know that, brethren. Hallelujah. Certainly. Sure, you never did see or hear the sun rise. You never did hear that. Did you ever go out at night to hear the dew fall? What would we do without it? See, it don't take that. I'll tell you one thing now. It's the still, it isn't the rippling waters that makes such a big noise and jumps up and down that reflects the beauty of the stars in it. It's a small pool that's deep and still that reflects the beauty of the stars. What we need tonight is that deep, rich experience. That's something down in us that it don't have to shout, yet it might. But we put all emphasis on our shouting. It might never speak with tongues, yet it might. But we put all emphasis on that. It might not attend Billy Graham's meeting or Robert's meeting or my meeting. You don't have to. What it has to have is the depths of God's eternal love. Amen. That spirit on the inside of him. That makes you what you are. That's what I was speaking about this morning. That's what I was... Pulling the church across Calvary back and forth. Don't you think because that you've spoke with tongues or that you know so much about the scriptures or you read somebody's books and you know more than the other fella? He said, put a mark on those that sigh and cry for the abominations that's been in the city. Who would he mark in our cities tonight? See, it's the depths of the spirit, not the shallowness. It's not the shell on the, on the hickory nut that's good. It's the hickory nut under the shell. You've got a big empty shell. you got nothing under there. What we need tonight is the depths of God's love. And when Elijah heard that still small voice, nothing bothered him. What have you heard in all of it? You'll be going in a few days. You heard Billy Graham. You'll hear Old Robert. You'll hear others. Great man, nothing against those men, they're God's servants. But don't listen to the noise. Hear that still small voice. That depth of something that comes into the human heart that takes all foolishness away from you. It takes all the world away from you. It makes you hate the things of the world and love the things of God. That's the depth, that's the pool that reflects the stars of God's eternal glory. That's the thing that brings forth tears to the eyes. Brings joy unspeakable and full of glory. It makes you stand when all other things will fail you. It makes it when the sickness comes or even death itself. It's still got the reflection of God's blessings in it. That little pool that's deep. 
and reflects the heavens, not the ripple and noise of the water. Riffling waters are not very deep. It's still waters that runs deep. 